Hey guys, Aaron Spiderman here again with a comic book video. Um, this was the video I've been talking about doing for a while. This is my Iron Man comic book collection. Um, I'm pretty sure I have everything from the most recent to the 97, 98 series, whichever, when Heroes Reborn took over, from then on I have, I believe, every issue Maybe minus some variants, but every main issue. And I got a couple older ones. So yeah, let's just dive in. This one, I I'm, think I did my con video, Invincible Iron Man 29. Um, I bought this in another book, so it didn't actually cost me 20. Great colors on there. Real nice book. Iron Man 33, I'm pretty, again, pretty sure you've seen the, this. Iron Man 86, first Blizzard. Iron Man 118, I believe this is the first James Rhodes, Rhodey. I think that's it, I'm not sure. Uh, Iron Man 142, first Space Armor. Iron Man 152 for Stealth Armor. Iron Man 169. I remember I got this at a con. I paid five bucks for it. It's the He Quits Being Iron Man. And 174. This is I got this cover when Iron Man 3 was coming out, just because it reminded me so much of it. Iron Man 190. This, I believe, at the end of this issue is when Tony decides to come out of retirement because Rhodey, who is Iron Man currently at this time, is going a little insane. It's 191. He, Tony comes back to fight Rhodey. I believe 192, that is the actual fight or the continuation of the fight. I'm not sure. Iron Man 200, first Silver Sentry in armor in battle with Iron Monger. Iron Man 219, first appearance of Ghost. I was a little disappointed with how they did Ghost in the movie. Um, not sure how you turn, you know, genius inventor who invents Ghost tech, gets screwed over by a company, uh, gets caught in an explosion, has his tech fused to him, and becomes an assassin. I'm not really sure how that translates into female. That was in an accident. That's obsessed with the quantum realm and Hank Pym and worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm not really sure how. I don't see why they couldn't just stick to this story more, but whatever. Iron Man 220, continuation of the ghost story, as well as Iron Man 221. Iron Man 225, believe this conducts the armor wars. Iron Man 226, 227, and then we a bit of a jump to 257, 258, Armor Wars 2, they did them kind of close together, 259, 260, 261, 262, 263, 264, 266, don't know why I didn't get 265, but 282, this is the first War Machine armor and James Rhodes in it, really love that cover. Iron Man 311, Hands of the Mandarin, Iron Man 312, okay, and this is when it dives into the Heroes Reborn, this is when they rebooted everything, gave a new origin for Iron Man and Hulk in this, I have two copies of that, uh, this is a 
variant to number one. Got this at my local comic book store, I think for five dollars. Iron Man number two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. And thirteen. And this is the last issue of that. Because then they decided to go back to... Oh, lost my place here. They decided to restart at number one. Here is Return. This is actually the Invincible Iron Man Wizard one half. I think this was like a mail away thing. As you can see, I paid five dollars at my local comic book store for it. Really cool cover. Here we go. Here's the new number one. Here is Return. Really like that cover. I believe I have two copies of that. Uh, this is the Sunburst variant they were doing for a lot of books. Really cool. Number two. Number two variant. Three. Four. Actually, I really liked some of these stories, just them coming back. Um, I can't remember a lot of this series. I really liked this armor. It was, like, bulky, but a little bulky in places, but sleek at the same time, if that makes sense. Had a really big chest piece, which I liked, because I always thought, like, especially in the movies, the Unibeam, it, like, if you want a really powerful Unibeam, you gotta have a bigger chest piece. So, I really liked that, because look, look at that thing. Look how big that is. That's a lot of energy that's going to be coming out of that. I'm not sure if that's Fing Fang Foom or an actual dragon. That's a really cool photo. See, I don't know what some of these stories where I can't remember. Thor. I believe it was in this series was when um, Iron Man invented the Thor Buster armor, which was really cool. I forget how, though. I think it was some sort of power source he used. It was the, um... Thor gave him some sort of crystal, I think, from Asgard. Get a little closer. See some of these covers. Some of the art on these is kind of weird. Uh, I guess he's shooting his repulsor, but it's like all around him. It's kind of cool. New hydro armor. Kind of has that classic look, but modern at the same time. Oh, Ultron and Iron Man armor. Ah, oh, it's really cool. Enough said. Him coming in from... Looks like Orbit or something. And 
Now this looks like, um, if any of you have the Marvel Legends series, I believe it's 8 Iron Man. This is what his suit is. Or what they designed the that suit off of. That's a really cool cover. Uh, I think uh, it kind of reminds me of like the liquid armor, kind of like how it goes over them. I think that's really cool. Kind of armors like that because it's light; you can take it anywhere. Not sure. I think this was a time travel story. I'm not really sure. Again, I can't remember all these. Sorry, guys. That's really cool. There we go. There's that's the issue 64 or 409. It's where he gets the Thor Buster armor. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure Thor gives him some sort of crystal or something that's a power source, and he uses it to power this suit. I want to say the suit's made out of something, too. I don't know if it's made out of Thor's hammer metal or what. It's made out of something special. And then powered by Asgardian energy. It's pretty powerful. Here, could be wrong, I think this is where Addy Gradnoff starts doing the cover covers. I'm pretty sure that's him. Some really good looking covers coming up. That's probably my favorite, him sitting in the chair. I love, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure this is Gradoff. I love how he does energy, like from the Repulsor. And these are the annuals, 99 annual, I think this is the 2001, and then 2001. Now that whole set, guys, um, the Wanda 89, is that where it ended on? Yeah, 89. 1 to 89, um, that cost me, I think, $67 for all of those, plus the annuals. Um, the 1 through 13, this set, the 1 through 13, that I'm pretty sure was like 10 or $15 for all of those. Um, so yeah, not too bad. And then I got this, I think it was 6 bucks. Iron Man the End, it's just a one-shot. Really cool looking suit. It's sort of like a uh, future tale. Like Tony's retiring, so he hires or trains a new Iron Man. Kind of like Batman Beyond, almost. So, it's really cool. Then we get into one of the best Iron Man stories ever. The Invincible Iron Man. This is the new num when it renumbered. 
extremists, not extremists like it says in the movie. Little things like that just make me mad when they do it. It's extremists. I'm pretty sure in this storyline somewhere they refer to it like how extreme it makes over the body. So again, extreme, extremists. Pretty sure that's Maya Hansen, Maya Hansen, however... I'm confused on how to spell In the movie, they said Maya, but, I mean, they screwed up something simple like extremists, so... Um, I know Maya and Maya are spelled the same way. I went to school with a Maya, so I always said Maya Hansen, but it could be Maya. And I just... Well, this is when the new story arc takes over. I think Iron Man 3 just did a really poor job of doing the extremist storyline. Um, I think Iron Man Armored Adventures, the TV show, I think they did a better job of telling that story in 20 minutes than Marvel did in two hours and some minutes. Uh, just my personal opinion. I didn't enjoy it very much. And this execute program was really good. It's, um, I think it's like Jensen's son or something. Oh, he had to fight Sentry. How he fought Sentry is really smart, too. I mean, he has extremists now, so he can think of all these ends. But, like, he wasn't trying to beat him. He was just trying to, you know, throw him off. Then he has to go around and beat all of his suits that he made with extremists. Then Civil War tie-ins. Actually, see, I... As much as I love Iron Man, I was not on his side in the book. I was Team Cap. But in the movie, I was Team Iron Man. Um, in the book, in this series, though, in the few issues that ties in, Tony gets a little, like, you you can understand a little more from his side why he is choosing to do what he does. So I liked that aspect, but um, at the same time, uh, it just, I still think he was wrong. World War Hulk. But at least in the mo in the movie, I thought he was at least a little less wrong because uh, there's one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when he sits down with Cap and his shirt says Ramita. Sorry, guys. But um, when he sits down with Cap and goes, nothing that's been done can be undone or can't be... Nothing that has been done can't be undone. He goes, just sign now. Last 24 hours become legit. You don't go to prison. Bucky goes to a psych rehab facility and not a Wakandan prison. And Wanda and him basically get to get off Scott free. And Cap's just like, oh no, you're detaining Wanda at a mansion. Then screw it, Tony. Like, whatever. I'm like, he literally handed you his silver platter and you smacked his hand away. I just... But in the, it was weird, because, like, even in the books, he, you know, he's just like, Cap, you're wrong, and beats the shit out of him. So, I didn't like that too much of Iron Man. Like, he was basically just like, register, register, register. But, I don't know. Annual. And he becomes the director's shield. Now, this right here is the start of probably my favorite run of Iron Man. It's, uh... Matt Fraction and Salvador, I think it's La, La Roca, La I think that's how you say it. I absolutely love this series. Just the the things they did were really good. Got two copies of that. Uh, Tony has extremists there, right there. One of the best villains probably... Uh, for Iron Man, or just in general, uh, Ezekiel Stain. Uh, this, oh, she's a bitch. She comes in here and a little bit later. But is he, I just, I love his outfit. I love his motivation. Um, I love his fight with Tony. It's just, he's a really cool bad guy. Of course, I mean, Tony outsmarts him, but I think he's like the one person that finally gave Iron Man a run for his money. That's a great cover. Spidey. It's one of my favorites. And this is where the Dark Reign... 
Again, another great story, but this story's sad. It's Tony starting to, um, well, okay, so he did, it was really smart, but at the same time dangerous. He took the Superhuman Registration Act, so everyone that had been registered, he downloaded into his brain. And the way he could do this, because he upgraded his body with Extremis. There's the Hero's Return costume, fighting Namor. Love that. So he... he, His brain was basically a computer. So he... Downloaded the Superhuman Registration Act. That's actually a second print. Um, into his brain, and then slowly started using the repulsor battery to um, delete information from his brain piece by piece. He kept downgrading suits. That's another variant. As you can see there, like, that's the original classic. I'm gonna get a better view, kind of getting into the nitty gritty here. There he is, suiting back up in the Mark One. And I just, there's a, there's a part where he mentions with Heather, or Pepper, Jesus, that he said he feels like he's losing his superpower. Because, you know, he didn't have power, he had his intellect, and he created things. He didn't, he didn't have a magical hammer, he didn't have a super soldier formula, he didn't have spider powers. He wasn't, he wasn't superhuman by any means. And then when Extremis happened, that was sort of like his superpower. And just, I don't know, it was really sad to hear him be like that. Some great covers. Now we're switching over to box two, because I ran out of room. And then the creation of one of my favorite personal suits, the Bleeding Edge Armor. Which, um, I know for a comic book, things can get really non-fiction, but when... I like this suit, but when he explains he hides in the hollows of his bones, it's like, well, so it pierces your skin when it's coming out? Wouldn't that be agonizing? I don't know. Just something I thought about, but really love this suit. It's a variant, issue 25. 26. And so now this is when he gets his memory back. He had a backup, and he had very specific instructions for... Um, all of his friends, Rhodey, Pepper, Captain America, Thor, just everyone. He had very specific instructions. And so he's back, but he doesn't remember everything. He, um, he, I think he, he remembers everything up until, like, right before Civil War or something. It was maybe a little before that, so, like, he doesn't remember... Cap being a vigilant or being an outlaw, technically, or um, being a technically, you know, like just technically criminal and fighting him, or anything that happened after that. So, this was a really good issue right here. Tony explains sort of the reasons behind his actions. He, he it's an a, it, the entire issue is an AA meeting. And it's just him, base this is basically the entire history of Iron Man, almost, in one book. And I just, I really loved it. Um, I wish more books would do this, do like a point one, and then just have a recap of everything. I think they should start doing that instead of renumbering everything every so often. Just like, do a point one issue, be like, here's ketchup. And just, who cares if Spider-Man's on 800, or who cares if Iron Man's on 600? Or, like, even Action Comics, it's on a thousand now. Like, who cares? Just let it continue. Like, that's crazy awesome to me that books are reaching these high of numbers. Just do, like, a point one once in a while and do, like, a quick um, catch-up. Like, Spider-Man, for instance, just bit by a spider, uncle died, bank robber let go, power responsibility, villains, couple major villain storylines... Like, I think that's, you know, ma and make it three ninety nine. Like, that's fine. Make it a little bit bigger, maybe a little thicker. And just have, like, a just a complete, comprehensible, comprehensive, whatever word, um, 
like origin and everything, or not origin, but like a retelling of everything. This was probably the weirdest armor. This was when James Rhodes took over. Well, not took over, but like Tony was like limited. I forget how they put like a surveillance thing on his heart monitor. So he was limited by what he could and could not do. So Brody took over and acted outside of any rules. So, there he is teaming up with Ezekiel Stain, fighting the Mandarin. But yeah, guys, this was a great run. It ended at 527. Honestly, my favorite. The 1 to 33, and then the 500 to 527. Just, my opinion, you can't. I have yet to find Iron Man stories that are better in this series. Okay, then. This is 2013 when it rebooted to number one again. Greg Land, I know, did the f couple covers and um, couple, some of the interior. Uh, you just saw this earlier. Same with that. This is the Hastings variant. Thought that was really cool. I'm designing everything. It's got the armory there. Blank. Now, I'm not sure. I think... I don't think he has extremists anymore at this point. Saw that already. But, um, he has, like, a new suit, like, every issue, almost. I'm just flipping through the ones you guys have definitely already seen that I've shown you. I really like that space armor. God killer. That's the regular cover. And this is the Dynamic Forces variant. Got the certificate there. I believe I have, yeah, I have two of those, and then the Midtown that I showed earlier. Really cool. I didn't really care for, that's when Dale Eagleson took over, or Eagle Sham. I really liked him. I loved his work on Green Lantern. Um, this is when they redefined Iron Man, gave him a new origin. I didn't really care for it. This guy right here, um, 451, I think, he's some, like, serving robot, and he... There's, like, a ton of him, but, like, he's used to go survey people or something like that, other, like, other planets and whatnot. And then the people, whoever built him, recovers the data, deletes him, and starts him out new. Well, he was never deleted, so he retained everything he learned from going out and exploring. So, well, it turns out, like... Uh, Howard and Maria Stark couldn't have a baby, and so eventually they did get pregnant, but there's probably going to be complications, the doctor said. So, um, 451 found Ra or Howard and had this, like, thing he was going to inject into Maria, and it was going to save the baby, but then Howard did something because he didn't trust 451, and that result was um, Arno Stark, who's Tony's brother, who's crippled and can't use his mouth to speak. And he has to speak other ways, like, um, kind of like a Stephen Hawking almost. And Tony's adopted, I don't know, it just, it got so weird. And they just, it was unnecessary what they did, in my opinion, for everything. Superior Iron Man. I really loved the storyline, loved the suit. I know a lot of people hated it, but it was basically if Tony... This was due to the events of Axis, Marvel event. It was basically like, what if Tony was still the dick he always was, but he still became Iron Man? Like, before he got changed by what he saw in the cave and was abducted and all that. Like, basically, what if he never changed, but still became Iron Man? I really liked it. Um, again, a lot of people hated it. This is another thing. Why, I don't know. This is another storyline they did. It's like, well, he had a backup of his mind in an old Iron Man robot, or like uh, Mark II, that was supposed to, you know, replace him almost. It did get kind of weird, but it was fun. Then, the Bendis run. I think I have the most variants for this series than I do of anything else. The design variant. 
I really like this armor too, Pepper Phantom variant. This is the, I it's Model 51, it's the Prime or something. That they're grabbing off cover. Look at all that detail in the machinery. Really awesome. Action figure variant. Uh, Bruce Tim variant. Homage to Iron Man number one. Deadpool. <laughs> Tales of Suspense homage. I don't know. I, this is the Stegman cover. I don't know all of these covers' names. I'm pretty sure I got most of these in a lot. I think it was like eight of these that I got, or six to eight of these. Um, that was all ten dollars. This I know I got off Midtown. Really cool. I'm just working around to the dyna Dynamic Forces variant. Uh, Grigland. Is that? Yeah, Hastings variant. You can see, I don't know, it might be hard to tell. You can see all the helmets in the back. Should really show his progress. I really liked this armor. I thought it was cool how it could, like, shift. And I love David Marquez art. Mary Jane. I remember everyone was making such a big deal out of this book, and I don't know why. <sighs> Face it. <laughs> Heard it. Love that cover. Doctor Doom. This is where a new story comes over with Rhodey. The art changes. Really love this cover. Seeing the machines in the suit. Story that I really like those story thus far covers. I think that's Neil Adams right there. Seven. First Riri Williams, who was just awful as Iron Man. That's her version of the suit. I don't know why she had to take over. I don't see why she couldn't just be a sidekick or be like a Stark assistant or something. I don't know. Saw that already. There's the beginning of hers. Now, I'm gonna sound like a bit of a hypocrite. I hated this run, but damn, some of the covers were just really cool. I don't know why I got that. Just some of it like that. Look, look at all that. Look at all that machinery. Really cool. Two. Three. Oh God, I just, I hated her so much. I literally was only collecting it 